guys, thanks for visiting my channel today. My name is Kelly Dell with Off the Beaded Path Beadstore.com. I'm so excited you've joined me today because we are going to be working on a brand new design using honeycomb beads and gem duo beads. So let's go ahead and look at what we need to get started. So this is the bracelet that I'm going to be showing you how to make today. I love this bracelet. It's so much fun and just very simplistic in its look. So the star of the show to me are the honeycomb beads. So honeycomb beads are of course shaped like a honeycomb shape and they have two holes. So for the pattern, I will be calling this hole the left hole and this hole the right hole. So if it's in front of me, the hole on this side is the left, the hole on this side is the right. You are going to need between 16 and 20 of these. You are going to need your Gem Duo beads. Now your Gem Duo beads have a rounded top and a fl flat <laughs> bottom to them. Again, you can see that they have two holes in the beads here and here. So when I refer to the holes in this pattern, if the bead is laying just like this on the map, this hole will be the left hole and this hole will be the right hole. So again, in front of me, left hole, right hole. So in addition to the honeycomb and the gem duos, you are going to need one gram of a size 15 seed bead. This is my Yuki. You are going to need one gram of a size 11 Mayuki seed bead. You are going to need 30 to 48 four millimeter drop beads or three millimeter fire polish beads. And I'll talk more about this as we go through. You're gonna need two and a half yards of your favorite thread. Today, I'm using the size six in the dragon thread. And you are going to need a size 12 beading needle along with your favorite clasp. So to start off the project, we are gonna be starting on one end and we're gonna be adding this bead and this bead here. So I'm gonna thread on a honeycomb in the right holes. If I tilt it up like this, you can see I'm going into the right hole. And then I'm going to thread on a gem duo in the left hole. Two 15s, one 11, and two 15s. We're gonna let these drop down and you wanna make sure that you leave about a six inch tail. So if you are not comfortable with just holding the beadwork, you can use either a stop bead, you can use a little piece of tape, or if you have a little mini bead stopper, or as I lovingly refer to this one as the bougie bead stopper, uh, you can put it on so that way your beads do not fall off as you work. It's easiest if you pick it up just like this and we are going to pass the needle down through the right hand hole of the gem duo. So I pass down through, hold that thread in place so that when I do, this is what you have so far. So I'm going to thread on a honeycomb and again, I see the holes the holes are here and here. So I'm gonna take the needle and I'm going to pass down through the left hole of the honeycomb. I'm going to thread on a gem duo and I'm going to go through the right hole of the gem duo. So left hole, right hole, and then it's gonna be two 15s 111 and 215s. So 215s, 111 and 215s. We drop these all the way down to the base. I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come up through the left hole of the gem duo. So the same gem duo I just added, I'm coming through the left hole. Now I want to pull the thread the way it's coming out of the bead. 
I'm gonna take my little stop bead off and now I'm going to tie these two threads together. So when we do, this is what we have so far. All right. Let me get everything situated here. There we go. So you can see we have our knot. Now we are going to pass the needle through the beads so that we are coming out of this left hole of the second gem do or the second honeycomb bead that we added. So I take the needle and I come up through the right hole of the honeycomb through the left hole of the gem duo and then I'm going to pass through the 215s the 11 and the 215 so if your needle passes through one or two of those 15s as you are coming up through that gem duo that's okay Get a hold of the needle. There we go. I'll pass through the right hole of the gem duo and then the left hole of the honeycomb so that I'm coming out right there. Now, when you are choosing your color thread, for this project, it's really important to choose a color that is going to go well with the honeycomb beads because we are going to be doing step ups into the honeycomb beads every time. So I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come right back up through the right hole of that honeycomb bead. So there's going to be just a little tiny thread between the two holes there. They're always going to be on this bottom side. If we hold it straight out, it's always going to be on that bottom side right there. So if you're following along from the pattern from offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com, this puts us up to step number five. So I'm going to thread on a gem duo and I'm going to be going through the left hole of that gem duo. And we're going to put on our seed beads. So it's two 15s, an 11, and two 15s. I'm going to let all these beads fall to the base. And then I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come down through the right hole of the gem duo or the open hole of the gem duo, whichever way is easier for you to learn it. We're ready for a honeycomb bead. So I'm going to pass down through the left hole of a honeycomb bead. And if I lay my gem duo out, I'm going through the right hole of the gem duo. Then it's our seed bead sequence of two 15s. 11 and 215s. And we let these drop all the way to the base. We want to flip them the way that we need them to lay. So now I'm going to come up through the left hole of the gem duo. And if but then if I can kind of go straight up, I'll also go through that right hole of the honeycomb bead. So if it starts to get loose, just pull your seed beads there and everything will tighten back up. So just like we did on this one, now we are gonna pass through the beads to come out of the left hole of this honeycomb bead. So I'm gonna come up through the gem duo through the 215s, 11 and 215s. I'm 
down through the gym duo. And then if you can do it, you can pass it through. If not, just do one at a time. Pass through that left hole of the honeycomb bead. We're ready for that step up again. So I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna come up through the right hole of the honeycomb bead. So, so far, this is what your piece should look like. So, at this point, we are just going to continue the steps until we have the length of the bracelet that we want. Now, as you work these repetitive steps, you want to pay attention to the type of clasp that you are going to use. In the kits that I have for a limited time, they are gonna have this really nice, strong magnet closure in them. So you are only gonna need about a quarter of an inch for the clasp itself. If you were going to use, say, like a toggle, you can you know, need an inch or more for that closure. So you'll just want to pay attention because this bracelet is pretty much all beadwork if you use a smaller size clasp like I did here. So <clears throat> you'll just kind of have to continue playing. I'm gonna do one more repeat and then I'm gonna let you go at it. So I'm gonna put on that gem duo in the left hand hole. Then it's two 15s, an 11, and two 15s. We let these drop. and take the needle and come down through the other hole of the gym duo. I'm going to take my honeycomb and pass down through the left hole of the honeycomb. So it sits in place there then we're ready for a gym duo. So I'm gonna go through the right hand hole of the gym duo. And then it's two 15s, an 11, and two 15s. I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna pass back up through that left hole of the gym duo and then through the right hole of the honeycomb. Pass through the gym duo. Through the two 15s, the 11 and the two 15s. Through the gym duo. And then through the honeycomb bead. I'm ready for that step up. So when I do the step up, I have to come up through the honeycomb bead into that right hand hole. And then as I said, you continue doing repeats until you reach the length of the bracelet that you desire. So if you'll remember during the beginning of the video, I said you could use four millimeter round or three millimeter fire polish. And here's the reason I said this, because not all gym duos and not all honeycombs are made exactly alike. They're supposed to be, but different finishes negate different sizes. Okay, so this is why I wanted to show you this. So if you'll look here on this bracelet, you'll see it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 of the honeycomb beads. Now, this is the one I'm currently working on and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This has one less 
honeycomb bead on it. So even if I put this on, it is only gonna take me out to right here. So you can see, even though they are almost exactly the same counts, because of the difference in the Gem Duo or the Honeycomb, it can make it a little bit smaller. And this, again, is gonna negate the sizing of your beads here on the outside and the sizing for your bracelet. So just be aware of this as you are working, um, that if you've made one or two and they have came out exactly the same, and then you go to make a third one and it doesn't, it's probably because either your Gem Duo or your Honeycomb is just a little bit different in size than the previous ones that you used. Once you are satisfied with the length of your bracelet, then we're ready to add the embellishments and the clasp. So you'll see here on the end, I've already done my step up and I'm coming out of the top of the end honeycomb bead. You are going to thread on 311s, the first part of your clasp, and 311s. I'm gonna take the needle and I'm going to come right back through the same gem duo so that it, or sorry, same honeycomb bead so that it makes a circle. And when I do that, this is what it's going to look like. So I'm going to reinforce the loop several times. So this means I'm gonna take the needle and I'm going to pass through 311s, the clasp, and 311s, and I'm going to do this um, three, four times. Okay, I'm not adding anything, I'm just reinforcing. And since the clasp is gonna take the majority of the brunt of the wear of this, we wanna make sure that we really get that good and reinforced. Once you're happy with the reinforcement, you are gonna take the needle and pass it through the 311s, the clasp, and the 311s so that you are coming out here on the other side with 311s. So I'm gonna lay this down on the mat. We're coming out this side, so we're only gonna work this one side right now. When I work on this side, I do not want to pull the thread tightly. I only want to pull it enough to pop beads in place. So no matter if you test the three millimeter, I'm sorry, four millimeter round or three millimeter fire polish bead, the ends are all going to be exactly the same. So I'm gonna thread on five of my 15s. So I have those five beads and I'm gonna take the needle and on this side of the bracelet, I will pass through the two 15s the 11 and the two 15s. Dependent upon the width that you have here between these beads is gonna be dependent on what you can put in there. Again, the original two that I did, I popped these beautiful four millimeters in there with no problems whatsoever. You can see there's exactly enough space for those. And as I started putting them on these, it just did not work. So three millimeter fire polish works wonderfully. You pick up one and you pass through the next two 15s, 11 and two 15s. And you can see now how that just lays right in there. So again, one three millimeter fire polish or four millimeter round bead. And I pass through two 15s, an 11 and two 15s. And you see, I'm not pulling tight. I'm just pulling enough to pop those into place. Three millimeter fire polish. And I'm gonna pass through the 215s, the 11, and the 215s. 
So again, as I work, I'm not pulling tightly. I'm just pulling enough to pop the beads into place. As you pass through these beads, if it feels like it's starting to bow up like this, or it's starting to get a little wavy, just take your fingers and roll them down the bracelet just like this to even out the tension. And I'm going to continue to do this all the way till I pass through these last five beads on this end. You can see here, I've worked my way down the bracelet, popping in my little three millimeter fire polish beads. And now I am here at the end where the tail thread is. I'm leaving this little tail thread because I'm gonna go through and reinforce the clasp at least one time with this tail thread before I trim it off. So I'm gonna ignore the tail thread right this second and just like on the other end, I'm gonna pick up five of my 15s. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna take the needle and I'm going to pass through the end hole of my honeycomb bead here. I'm gonna thread on three 11s, the other part of my clasp, and three 11s. And you can see here, my working thread is coming out of the bottom of this honeycomb. So I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna pass right back through it again so that it does a little circle just like the other end. I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce if you cut the two and a half yards of thread, you have plenty of thread to do several passes for the reinforcement here. So I'm gonna go through it and I'm gonna reinforce it one more time. And once that's done, I finish out the step by passing through the honeycomb bead. So I'm coming out of the honeycomb. Now you'll notice we're gonna pick up our five beads now and come here. But you'll remember on this end, I actually came out of the three 11s to do this. It, we do each side just a little differently. You come up with the same same premise, but because of the way that this side finishes up, this is the reason that we do it that way. And how funny, it's got the glue sticking out right there. Um, so I'm coming out of the honeycomb, five of my 15s, and I pass through the two 15s, the 11 and the two 15s. And so see, it works out exactly the same as it will on the other side. So now I'll work through the piece, putting in my three millimeter fire polish on this end. And before I go any further, I'm gonna take my needle, I'm gonna thread it onto this short tail thread and pass it through to reinforce. And then I'm gonna get rid of that little thread. Okay, so as you can see here, I've gone down both edges with those beautiful three millimeter fire polish and I'm here at the end. So just like we did here on this side, we're gonna pick up five of our 15s and we're gonna take the needle and pass through the six beads with the clasp. So that now both edges, both clasp parts are identical even though we did them just a little bit different they are identical and if you want if you have the extra thread left over you can definitely take and reinforce this if you wish there's no reason to it's going to be fine but if you just have the extra thread and you want to you can definitely do that just by passing through the beads that are in place we're not gonna add anything, you can just pass through. Now, when I get ready to finish off, 
I come in between one of the 15s and either the three millimeter or the four millimeter, whatever you have here. And I'm gonna pass under the thread between those two beads, leave myself a little loop, pass the needle through that loop and pull. That's a little half hitch knot. And then I'll pass through a few more beads. I'll come between the 15 and the three millimeter or four millimeter, whatever you've got, and pop another one there. So I normally put in about three half hitch knots and then tie the, th just finish off the thread. Now I never ever cut the thread right at a knot. So once I put in that last knot, I will pass through a few beads before I finish off the thread. Now, I know this is probably one of the first times you're seeing me use this. This is a um, thread zapper that a lot of my bead retreat students had this summer. And of course I had FOMO and had to give it a whirl. This is the name of the product. And you can find this on amazon.com, but it is a rechargeable thread zapper. The tip is a firm tip. It's not squishy like on the original thread zappers. So it's pretty neat and it comes with a little clear top there that you can carry it with, but it's rechargeable. I have had mine since um, the first week of June and I have only charged it twice. The second time I charged it was just a week and a half ago. So charge is amazing on those things. And as of right now, I think they make this in white and pink. I did want to show you really quickly before I log off for the day, I wanted to show you when you go to the website off the beaded path beadstore.com where to find these uh, gem duos and honeycombs. So if you look here, it says shop by category. And if you scroll down, you'll see here where it says two whole beads. So I'm going to tap the little arrow there next to the two whole beads. And you will notice that it then drops it down into all of the different beads. So you will see here's the Gem Duo category, and then here are the Honeycomb beads. So if you click on it, it takes you straight to that page, and it will show you all the Honeycombs that we currently have. Now, the only thing that I need to make you aware of is the Beadsmith Company is clearancing out a lot of honeycomb beads right now. And they're mainly gonna be these really cool jet, like laser type beads. So any of these that you see that have these really neat laser finishes, they are only gonna be available for a limited amount of time because they are getting rid of all of these um, I'm not really sure why. They're amazing. I love them. I love to use them. I mean, check that out. So just be aware of that as you shop. So get what you think you're going to need on those. So the honeycombs, again, are there. And then the gem duos, you can click those. And then again, it will take and show you all the gem duos that we currently carry. And again, the website is off the beaded path beadstore.com. So guys, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this really quick and fun bracelet. It's a good stash buster if you already have some of these in your stash, especially those 15s and 11s, just because you use so few of those. Now for a limited time, I do have these three colors available in kits on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com under the kit section. And I also have the step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm going to link the kits in the video down below here in the video description box. So it'll take you straight to these kits or that pattern because the pattern is wonderful and it has all of the colors that I used uh, listed on the pattern. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.